Hi guys, it's Fertis here. So materials can be very useful when you're sculpting inside of ZBrush. And today I'm going to show you the three that I use. And on top of that, you can download them for free because some of them take a little bit of time to set up and they can be sometimes complicated. But we can just plug these into your ZBrush and use them straight away. So towards the end of the video, I'll show you how you can slightly manipulate them to your own taste and get benefits out of them and how to use them. So I'm going to be sending those materials out if you just follow the link below. Um, so I'll be sending them via email. And sort of at the same time, you'll receive loads of other goodies in terms of retopology and a chance to come into our really thriving Discord if you're interested in getting in the games industry. So the first material you're probably used to is just the basic material in ZBrush. So it's pretty good for sculpting. I think one advantage with it is you can change the lighting scenario. So when you're sculpting, it can be very useful to change the lighting perspective so you can see different forms. Now, the issue with that, it doesn't offer too much depth when you're sculpting on surfaces, especially sort of like in the mid-tones. Another disadvantage is at certain angles, sometimes the lighting can be lost. So if you're looking down the body or getting a different silhouette, sometimes things get plunged into darkness. So all the standard materials can be found on this panel. And then what you've probably also seen are matte cap materials. So matte cap materials are slightly different. Probably the first thing that you realize is that when you move the light, none of the scenario changes. It means that the light's almost like baked in. And the way that ZBrush renders that is basically from an image of a sphere and then it starts to sample pixels and then apply that to the model. In the materials that I've made, we, we make use of that just so we can see every aspect no matter what angle we're working with. We can always see the model and continue sculpting. So one of the materials I'm giving you today actually combines these two technologies in a way it's kind of complicated to set up, but it makes use of both lighting and the full lit matte cap material samples. Maybe in a more advanced video, quite a larger one, I'll show you how to do it. Uh, but if you're not interested in that, we can just download it straight away. I'm going to show you how to load these materials once you've downloaded them. So if you come into the materials icon for you guys, it might be on the left side. Click that, you'll get your list of materials. And in the bottom left, you can come to load. With the new directory, just come into the 3D Mutiny Essential Materials. Click on one of them to open it. Now, the annoying thing about this is you have to do it one by one. But it's a cool way to basically check the material to see if you like it if you want to keep it so if you do want to keep it there is a way of saving it into a zbrush directory so that when you close it and reopen it it's always going to load up so it's very useful because basically when you load a material it doesn't save and you're gonna to have to reload them every time so to insert them into your library uh, depending if you have 2020 24 for example uh, find your local disk disk it's usually c drive unless you have saved it somewhere else go under normal programs max on zbrush 2024 for this example and then you're going to find z startups folder in Z Startups folder, you're going to also find materials. Really quickly, just drag and drop those into here. That means you don't have to load them up all individually. A second tip, I'll be showing you how to edit the materials. And so sometimes you might find a combination that really works for you. So if that is the case, you're going to press save and then you're going to save it into that location. So the first material I use is 3DM Dry Sculpting. This is a really useful map cap because it's uh, baked in lighting basically from the top left and to right down to the bottom right so no matter what angle you're working at you'll always be able to see at least a full depiction of the model and as you're moving you can basically play with the shadow so when you're etching in some sort of concept or trying to get mass and form it's really useful and also that the specular is not interfering with our surfaces so sometimes with some of the materials they're a bit shiny and then you start to lose track of what you're actually sculpting. So for you guys that download it, I really advise starting with a dry sculpt, uh, just like someone would use classically with clay. And it works really well with organic brushes like the clay, the clay build up and dam standards. So you can see form and insert it really quickly. Now, the other material is really good for anatomy, especially for character sculptors or anything you're sculpting, really. But it just insult inserts a little bit extra specularity or a little bit of wetness. So it's called 3D Mutiny Spec Anatomy. And what you can tell from this is it's added uh, a dielectric blue specular, which is very similar to um, skin rendering and skin surfaces. So this would actually work really well with any sort of skin texturing or detail that you put into it. Maybe there's some skin color or some different variations. It'll even work across multiple ethnicities, but also it doubles up as a very, very nice uh, sculpting material. So maybe if you go up a couple of divisions, this is when you start to use the specularity. And it works really well on smooth surfaces. So say, for example, we've done our dry sculpting, done the concepting. Now we want to get onto the main piece and just refine the surface. And this is where the specular is going to come in really handy. So as you see, as I move about, it has that very slight shine to it. And the way the material has been set up, you know, it's quite complicated. We can still use the lighting scenario to basically move the light around. 
and see how that surface is working. So when it comes to anatomy, it's important to have like smooth transitions of anatomy. And this is where the uh, specularity anatomy material is going to come in really handy. Also really good when you come into the high frequency details. Say for example, you're putting in some pores. Um, now I'm using a very basic spray brush just to get the analogy across. But once you insert that kind of alpha, you can then get the light and make it run across that surface to see how your pores are interacting. Uh, if you've watched any of the videos in the channel, basically how I go through how to make certain body parts. One thing that I'm always talking about is the silhouettes. So for example, in the top left, you usually have this new feature in ZBrush, which is like a silhouette checker. I don't really tend to use that. I actually minimize that into the distance because if I do want to work on the silhouettes, I've actually made a material for that and I want to move it at the same time. So with this in the package that you've downloaded, it will be 3D Mutiny Outline. And what it does is it really highlights the outer edge of the perimeter. So you can switch between the dry and the outline and basically start to adjust your silhouettes, maybe increase the form, make things sharper. So this would be really good for stylized as well because stylized is very heavy on the silhouettes. And the benefit with this in comparison to this upper window is that we can basically rotate around the model and just check all the silhouettes and make sure the form is correct. So switching between those two, you can come up with something really good, then switching to the specular to refine the surface later down the line. And that's all you really need. You only need three materials to complete a task like that. The nice thing about this 3D outline, it obviously gets rid of all the central forms. So your mind isn't um, contaminated by the inside centers. Uh, but I've also put a very slight highlight on the center just so you can see where the model is. Uh, and that's just for navigation purposes. Fundamentally, it's so high contrast that you'll only be focusing on the surfaces. The nice thing about this as well, it also does internal surfaces. So say, for example, there's a larger form. For example, here we've got the breasts. We can just adjust that to our references and then come back to the drawings to continue to start sculpting. So definitely download those and go on the email chain because I'll be sending all sorts of resources whenever I find them useful. And before I show you to how to adjust these to your own personal tastes and maybe a couple of recommendations for changing things, I have recently opened a membership. So if you click join next to subscribe, there's really useful information in there in terms of industry live events that we're doing, giving feedback to you and more private videos based on the workflows of games artists and, th and things like that. So if you're looking to excel, definitely get on that. So a couple of adjustments you can make, you can obviously change the color of the background and the object itself. So you'll always be able to paint on this, pick a color and then fill the object. So usually I keep it as a gray tone, so maybe lighter or darker depending on how clearly I want to see the shadows and the highlights. So mid gray is usually quite nice. Or if you're just feeling like a little bit more of an anatomy study, you can put a slight pink or red in there and then just aim for the sort of like top left of that color picker and it will give you a, a fairly nice color and you can just experiment around that. The nice thing about changing the color here and why I haven't baked it into the material is that when we switch between the specular and the dry, it's going to keep the same color that you had, which is a really nice effect. So it's nice and open and dynamic. So if you want to adjust some of the materials to your own preferences, if you come into materials and we'll just dock this to the side and we'll use the specular one, for example, open up modifiers. And for the specular one, you'll see there's two shaders that are overlaid on each other. And for the dry one, there's only going to be S1, so there's one. So you can switch in between these and change the settings. I wouldn't change too many. The ones I would focus on, say, for example, you want to change the specular, I'd come into the specular curve. So for those who understand what roughness is in PBR, like in uh, Substance Painter and things like that, we can change the focal shift. If you look on the mesh, it's very slightly changing how sharp that transition is. But the reason we can't see it so much is because the specular value is very subtle. So if you want that to pop a bit more, just up this and you can see it becomes a bit more shiny to the extent of glossy. But with skin, it's very, very subtle. And obviously on different surfaces, there's going to be different amounts of sweat. So we just want something that's very generic and light and then we can change the focal shift. But you can change this all to your, to your own preferences. On the underlay, you can change things like opacity or up the ambience just in case you want to see uh, more shadows. Now, if you're taking a render or you're trying to get, get some feedback, for example, you can adjust the intensities. So intensity A and intensity B, just going to increase the contrast of your model and then you can export it like that. Say you're doing a render. So say, for example, we did some skin texturing. We like how it is looking. You can up the int A intensity, lower the B intensity, and you can see that the transitions have just increased there. And then under the render settings, we can either come into best screen render, it's a bit dark and dusty, I find. But then again, it does add a little bit of realism, which is quite nice. Or you can come into BPR. So under BPR render passes, we've got the BPR button. There's a couple of filters that you can change or maybe some properties. 
I usually keep them all the same. But what it's going to do is going to get rid of some pixelization and anti-aliasing and smooth it out slightly. And that can also be a slightly nice render. Uh, and obviously it works really well with the specular anatomy material. So yeah, I would send that off to someone for feedback, maybe in the works in progress feedback on the Discord. It's a really good method because we can see all the form and it's very clear. And then you can insert normal uh, skin texturing like different color zones and things like that. So if you enjoyed that video and you're enjoying the materials and using them, uh, make sure you like so you can always come back in your history and check this video to find it just in case you want to see the references again, how to change all the materials. Jump into the Discord's say hello. Subscribe if you want to see future content like this and I'll catch you on the next one.